Hello viewers, I am here again with NCERT's live phone in program on Swayam Prabhas Kishore Manch channel and you watch this program live on NCERT's official YouTube channel NCERT official. I am Shalini Singh with you. Computer has changed many things but the fact is it has also given us many things and one of those important thing is e-content development. So, let's discuss how good or bad this e-content development is with our expert Dr. Angel Rathnabai from Central Institute of Educational Technology, NCERT. Welcome Dr. Angel. Namaste viewers. Welcome to the session on e-content development and validation. Okay, so let's start our session with the introduction of the topic and tell us something about this e-content. Yeah. Uh, e-content is nothing but any resources which is available in a digital form and it is not just only for education but e-content is available for usage in multiple fields as well. But being from our, our education uh, discipline, we also can use e-content for the education purpose. So, there are various forms of e-content that can be used in education. Okay, okay. So, uh, when you are talking about various forms, so I am interested to know what kind of uh, e-content we are talking about here. Is it limited to text only? Uh, no, e-content is not just text. It can be a single uh, type of resource or sometimes it is a combination of different type of media. Mm -hmm. E-content can be uh, a text, a video, okay. it can also be audio, it, mm -hmm. it need not just with audio, video and images, it mm -hmm. can be a combination made as multimedia, mm -hmm. it could be animation, it could be an interactive. Uh, by the word interactive, what I mean is where a, a person who is able to interact with that resource mm -hmm. in the digital form. Mm -hmm. You must have seen questions where you are able to drag and drop, right, right. those are all called as interactives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, inter, uh, e-content can be of interactive Type and, and different types of quizzes as well. Yes, different mm -hmm. types of quizzes which you take online mm -hmm. is also one type of interactive mm -hmm. okay. where the person is able to interact with that resource mm -hmm. directly by clicking or by moving on that it is called as interactive. Okay. So, e-content can be a interactive, even e-books are all called as e-content. Mm -hmm. There are variety of immersive content. Nowadays, you can hear the words AR. Mm -hmm. We are, we call AR as augmented reality, okay. VR as virtual reality. Okay. So, these are also new type of e-contents that is emerging nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, it is not like e-content is of one type of media, okay. multiple type of media can be combined to form a innovative way of e-content as well. Okay. So, not only are viewers learning, but I am also learning this way. Fine. So, uh, we already have textbook material available. Why is it necessary to have e-content development? A textbook is one type of resource which is available in a physical form, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, textbook is not the all. Sometimes, some materials which is available in textbook, even nowadays the textbooks are converted to e Pub, it, it's in a form of a digital book mm -hmm. which has uh, EPUB format or in a PDF format. Mm -hmm. When it is converted mm -hmm. to a digital format, which we call it as ebook, mm -hmm. ebook is also one type of e content. Right. So, it's yeah. like textbook is one type of resource. Mm -hmm. When it is converted digitally, it becomes one type of e content which we call it as digital books. And it becomes easy to read. Yes, it is yeah. it's not only easy, it mm -hmm. also have multiple other functionalities. Mm -hmm. In your textbook already the printed material is already provided, when once it is published it mm -hmm. is already disseminated. Mm -hmm. But when it is in the form of e book, you also have an additional facility of accessing other e-content in through your book. You mm -hmm. must have seen interactive textbooks, mm -hmm. where in your book you have a video embedded into it. Okay. So, when you open a book, it is not just reading the text, along mm -hmm. with the text you can watch a video, mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. with the text you can also get somebody re read the text for you, mm -hmm. when you are not able to read. Mm -hmm. There can be after reading a particular set of text, there can be a quiz embedded into it. Mm -hmm. So, when you are converting the normal textbook which is published mm -hmm. to, to a digital book, you have facilities like this, opportunities to have interaction and engagement in the textbook. 
-hmm. which is in a digital form gives yeah. you more opportunity for encourage right. engagement it and means learning. learning with fun is there yes yeah. learning with fun and learning through engagement is there mm -hmm. okay so as this online reading or watching video and, uh, and hearing uh, audio format is really easy to understand, so is it possible that this uh, e-content development is going to change or replace textbook material? Uh, e-content development cannot replace textbook, but it will add value to the materials which we already have. Okay. Like for example, some of the textbook content, like for example, you would have learnt in science mm -hmm. the functioning of heart. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Functioning of heart is nice to read about how functioning happens. Mm -hmm. The text is material is there in the textbook right. and you also right. see an image in the textbook, mm -hmm. but you are not really able to see how the functioning happens. Mm -hmm. You are not able to visualize, mm -hmm. but when you are going to bring this e-content into the uh, book, mm -hmm. like maybe it is embedded into the printed textbook using a QR code. Mm -hmm. or in a digital form, in the digital books it is embedded. Okay. The functioning of textbook could be presented as an animation or even as an augmented reality content. Mm -hmm. Like when a student just touches the heart, he can see where the blood flows, mm -hmm. from which article it flows. Mm -hmm. Like he can be able to see each and every functioning one by one. So this visualization is not always possible in a flat 2D image or in the text. Sometimes there is a need to visualize. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. for example, in mathematics, we would have learnt uh, types of triangle. Right, and right. once we learn the theorem that some of the interior angles of triangle is 180 degree, mm -hmm. it's not always like we give some activities to the students, like mm -hmm. take a paper, cut mm -hmm. a triangle, mm -hmm. measure the angle, mm -hmm. and then see that it's 180 degree. But how many times we can try? Only 40 children? Mm -hmm. Maximum if you have 60 children in the class, 60 triangles we can try. But mm -hmm. the theorem says it is true for all triangles. So we need to show them more and more it's not feasible with our textbook alone it mm -hmm. needs an additional resource so that is where the different types forms of e content will support us it's not only through one image mm -hmm. it can be again projected as an animation right. it can also have a simulation mm -hmm. where a child can keep changing the type of triangle and see what happens to the uh, some of the triangles mm -hmm. so there is a need but it contributes addition of e content in various forms contributes to cognition in a better way. Right. So, this is the best so activity to engage will, any child in uh, education. Yes, but it will right. never replace books. True. So, I, I like books too. Yeah. <laughs> and there is a purpose for book. We need to also improve the reading skill mm -hmm. and uh, there is a lot of thing that goes it's not just reading when you and read a book read online content 24 uh, yes. 7 and that's um, bad for our health too health is also yes, concerned yes. so mm -hmm. and uh, there is a learning style also mm -hmm. always we everyone cannot get engaged with digital sometimes mm -hmm. we need books also mm -hmm. but uh, for pra we also for even for any student who's interested learning digitally mm -hmm. we always give a flavor of reading through books trying to understand through various resources Mm -hmm. So, it is not that even in olden days when digital content was not there, mm -hmm. there was not just one textbook a person refers. They read the textbook, but they learn like they were referring to several reference materials. Mm -hmm. True. So, now all this e content is like a rich reference material which we have, and also it is all a rich teaching aid which a teacher can use. Okay. Old, uh, the olden days, the teachers used chart. Uh, like a small flash card, mm -hmm. like a picture. So, th these are all now improvised in the form of digital mm -hmm. and we have lots of e-content that can be used in that. And way. we should know when and how to use it. Yes, that is important. Okay, in a better way. Well, uh, we are talking about two terms here today, e-content development and its validation. Yes. So, let us come uh, to the first point first. Uh, when we are talking about e-content development, how this process takes place? Okay. Uh, E-content development in the last few years in India has taken a very, um, uh, very fast track. It's in a fast track mode. Mm -hmm. Like uh, everyone in the country in the education system is more concerned towards e-content development. Right. So earlier e-content were developed only by certain organizations who were just developing the content and just mm -hmm. uh, making it as uh, uh, they were selling it. Mm -hmm. and some of the organizations were just giving it for free for 
people to use it. Mm -hmm. But now it's not like we are waiting for somebody to develop e-content and give it to us, but we are more looking at, we want to have our own e-content which suits my own scenario, my own particular context. Mm -hmm. So right now if you see, each and every one is trying to create the e-content. Right. So that's where the challenge has come the and question and is on the quality of right. e-content. We need to have a check on that. Yes. yes. So, uh, if we all in the process of developing e-content, if we can follow certain standard processes, mm -hmm. it will help the development of e-content in a better way to mm -hmm. give a quality content. Uh, basically, something is called as instructional designing. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you want to design any instruction, there are several ma models which you mm -hmm. can follow how to develop it. So, mm -hmm. one of uh, that's one of such uh, famous one which is widely used, it is not famous, it is widely used, we call it as ADI model. Okay, uh, name so is really it's, nice, it's like, ADI, you can, can like in this, the five letters stands for five different mm -hmm. stages of developing mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So, the first uh, step is analysis. So, okay. in this process, basically the development process starts with analyzing what do I want. Mm -hmm for whom I want. Hmm. So, it starts with the analysis and it moves to design stage, right. then to development stage, then implement it, then, then evaluate validation. it. So, this yeah. is one model which uh, is widely followed while we develop e-content. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. So, is it really helpful? Yeah, it is really helpful one, once we understand every step in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. So, let us try to understand little deeper in, in detail about mm -hmm. each and every step of this development process. Okay. So, the first uh, process you see here is analysis. Mm -hmm. So, basically uh, even when a teacher goes to teach in a classroom, right? Okay. this is done by a teacher. True. Even when somebody prepares tea in your house, we mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. We try to ask for whom I am preparing this tea, yeah, whether the person wants tea with milk, and how without many, milk, right, right. whether the person drinks a strong tea or a lighter tea, mm -hmm. these are the analysis we do, mm -hmm. whether I should add sugar, not sugar. So, basically the analysis is first level is what is my need. Mm -hmm. So, in e-content development also the first thing what we are expected to do is what is the need of this e-content which I am going to develop. Mm -hmm. So, to decide decide the need, whether I need it or not, there are few things which we need to consider. And better we say target. Yeah, target is one of the thing. Mm -hmm. So, when you wanted to analyze the need, one is the target group, mm -hmm. whether my children need this, okay. whether the teacher need this. So, mm -hmm. that is first parameter we need to think while we wanted to come out with the need. Mm -hmm. The second point which we think is whether my content needs this. Mm -hmm. So, in analysis if we see the first analysis is a need analysis to uh, trying to understand whether my target needs this. Okay. The second analysis we do is the content analysis where we understand whether my content needs this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the content needs a e-content, sometimes mm -hmm. the content needs a simulation or an animation, mm -hmm. but sometimes the content does not need it. Mm -hmm. Like for example, in a primary kids when you want to teach them this is parts of the plant. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it will be more beneficial if you really bring a plant and show to a child True. like a small plant and then show this is leaf and this is root mm -hmm. and all this mm -hmm. rather than just showing an image. Mm -hmm. So, when there is a possibility to experience with a real experience, mm -hmm. there is no need for a content, Creating video or something, audio or or something or that. like that. Yes. But there is something which you cannot like for example, I want to teach about digestive system. I cannot really see how digestion happens. Right. We cannot go inside our body to mm -hmm. see. So, there is a need that we need to animate it or mm -hmm. simulate it for the children so that they can visualize the process. So, the second analysis what we see here is about the content analysis that is mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. And the third part when we talk about is the uh, context itself, mm -hmm. whether in my context we can use this or not. When I say context, it talks about our infrastructure, mm -hmm. creating a higher level of digital resource, but I do not have a basic infrastructure in my class. Mm -hmm. So, that is not going to support me. So, when I want to use it in my class, I also should look into my context. So, this is the first step of developing an e-resource where mm -hmm. we analyze the need. And once you are able to analyze, we then move to on designing it. Okay. 
Right. So when we say designing an e-content, we need to put our ideas together. Mm -hmm. Okay, how it will start? Mm -hmm. How it will the content flow will go? Mm -hmm. What is the uh, visual I will show? What will be the text? So basically, we technically call this as storyboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, we write the script, what words has to be spoken mm -hmm. and then we also write a storyboard to say at this point of time this will be the visual. Mm -hmm. When this visual is coming, there should be a voiceover, somebody speaking on this. So putting all our ideas. So it's a kind of 2D or 3D film. Yes, it is basically a visualization yes. of your e-content mm -hmm. in the form of in the form of uh, uh, audio or videos. Yes. Like so that's called as storyboarding. So mm -hmm. that's what we do in the second uh, phase of development, which is called as designing. Mm -hmm. So we design like what exactly we will do. Mm -hmm. And in the third phase, we really do the development. Okay. When you say development, the actual development happens. For mm -hmm. example, if you're planning to do a video de development, mm -hmm. in a video, you may need specific images. Mm -hmm. So, you a photographer need to go and click on those images right. and bring it back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may not have readily available images which cannot be even taken up. So, you mm -hmm. need to create it in a form of graphics. Right. So, then the graphics has to be created. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may need like some sounds is recorded. Mm -hmm. You need a real sound to be recorded for that video. Mm -hmm. So, it bits and pieces all the content are gathered and combined then they together. are combined together mm -hmm. and the final Output, output is prepared in the development stage. Mm -hmm. That what we see as uh, development stage. And in that development stage, once we do, it's not just stopping with development and directly going on to it. Mm -hmm. Once you have developed, it is to be previewed. Okay. I have thought about having all this in my video. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. developed it. Has mm -hmm. it come out in the same way? Mm -hmm. So we call it as preview, where we preview it first. Mm -hmm. And also, once you have created it, we call something called metadata mm -hmm. profile to be made. For example, what subject video is this? Mm -hmm. For what purpose it can be used? Mm -hmm. So, 100 videos have been developed. Mm -hmm. So, how do you find out a single video? Right. So, that is where we call some information about this particular video or particular e-content has to be prepared, which is called as metadata. Okay. Metadata is nothing but the information about a particular uh, item. Okay. So, here in our case, it is about a e-content. Mm -hmm. So, these are some of the steps which are followed during the development stages. And then validation comes after that. Yeah. Even before we go for validation, we try to do a piloting. Okay. Like while we are doing piloting, validation mm -hmm. is not just a last step. Okay, okay. Like the way we have annual examination and then mm -hmm. pass out. Okay. It is not like that. Mm -hmm. Validation is at every step. I do analysis, I mm -hmm. do validate mm -hmm. whether my analysis is right. Self check is Self checking is okay. there. Okay. In designing, when I have designed like this is how it will come. Mm -hmm. So, a group of people is required to sit and validate the design itself. Mm -hmm. For example, somebody has to see from the subject perspective, mm -hmm. whether subject wise the content is in the right flow. Mm -hmm. Somebody should see from the technical view. True. Whether if I convert it in this way, mm -hmm. whether it will look nice when I present it in this form. Mm -hmm. So, there is a need for a technical expert to view from that point. It is a teamwork. So, yes, it is yeah. a teamwork true, true. and even at design stage, there is validation. Mm -hmm. And even at development stage, when the photographer brings all the images, there is one validation. Mm -hmm. When you record audio separately, there is a validation. Mm -hmm. When you combine it, again there is a validation. True. So, there is validation at every point, right? right? right, right. So, we call it like though it is all a simple self evaluation being done, mm -hmm. it is to validate and cross on that particular step. Right. So, validation in this whole process is not at the end, mm -hmm. but it is playing a val uh, it's it's playing a role at every stage okay. so that our content can be made in a proper quality manner okay right right so um if I think uh, this content is so important, then there should be any subject matter expert for this content development do we need uh, whenever a e content is developed, it needs a team 
it's not just one subject matter mm -hmm. because uh, like for example nowadays we don't develop content only for one particular subject mm -hmm. there is lot of integrated approach followed okay. so it depends on what content you are developing if you are developing a content for one spe specific one then that particular subject matter alone is sufficient mm -hmm. but still but we need according to the content we need the subject matters mm -hmm. Al not only the subject matter when i say subject matter the person who has proficiency in that particular subject namely science mm -hmm. mathematics language or mm -hmm. so but there is also a need for other experts mm -hmm. so one of the experts whom i mention is the technical expert like mm -hmm. the person who knows technology the person who can just speak about whether this will look appropriate to convert mm -hmm. into a digital form mm -hmm. when you convert for example sometimes uh, you have a act act uh, e content to be developed for a particular purpose mm -hmm. the purpose may be for example i'll take a purpose that you want to improve the listening skill of the student right okay mm -hmm. so for that you are creating a e content mm -hmm. so when i create a e content sometime the con content will come from the subject expert mm -hmm. but is it should be a audio resource whether it can be a video resource mm -hmm. or it should be a multimedia resource mm -hmm. which is more appropriate so that has to be also discussed the selection of the type of media is very important mm -hmm. so for selecting that there is a need for a technical expert also mm -hmm. to be in the group okay but it's not just two two people it depends on what you are developing again to expand this team mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. for example if you're going to create a simulation okay okay or an argumented reality or a virtual reality based e content mm -hmm. there is a need for somebody who knows how this is being programmed mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it it need not be that it's not from the designation but an expert who knows the kind of technical things which is happening mm -hmm. at the back end maybe a programming part sim, sim, uh, similarly if you are making a graphic story book Mm -hmm. there is a need for a expert Graphic from graphics expert, right. so it's like a team that has to be made according to the content which you are developing right right so as we are talking about e content here is there any guideline available online for the readers yes uh to just before we uh, just bring out this initiative of guideline i would also like to say about certain scenario which is happening in india related to okay. this e content sure, so that sure. we understand the need for guideline mm -hmm. uh in uh, right now in the last two years uh, there is a lot of initiative government has taken mm -hmm. to make all this e content being developed by different organizations mm -hmm. available at free for all the teachers and students and all the other community uh, Uh, people who are the stakeholders of education mm -hmm. so for this purpose uh, we are already have a portal which is national repository of mm -hmm. open educational resource uh, uh, also we also have a portal which is called as diksha mm -hmm. so uh, we have several portals and ncert also has disseminated all their resources through e patshala mm -hmm. so there are several portals where lot of resources are available so now we are also getting it's not a separate individual work of ncert but mm -hmm. it's a collaborative project wherein whoever is interested is ready to contribute to the society right. so we are now making as a movement of oer open educational resource mm -hmm. which we means like it's not my product mm -hmm. it doesn't belong to me alone it can be used by all of us it's like a shared material which mm -hmm. we can share and use it right. so that's that's the idea behind open educational resource mm -hmm. so that is what the movement is moving on in india mm -hmm. so uh, which gave uh, the importance of this oer has been reflected in creating portal like nr oer and diksha mm -hmm. now several people are contributing the, to this portal Right. when several persons start contributing there is something required as guideline mm -hmm. so we as ncert has formed a committee along with experts mm -hmm. to come up with a guideline so that it helps every one of us who is developing e content to have the basic standards mm -hmm. so that our content is having the quality to reach the real stakeholders right. so you can see this document here mm -hmm. uh, this is a book which has been published so this is called as guideline for development of e content for school education though it's very specifically written as school education it can also be it can also be uh, used by anyone okay. okay okay 
So, this book is not just available as hard copy mm -hmm. because it is buying and then where it is available you need not search for it. Mm -hmm. It is already available as a soft copy in uh, CIT as well as NCRT website. Is it available online as well? Yes, mm -hmm. it is available online. You mm -hmm. can access this resource from CIT website. Mm -hmm. In the menu bar, you have something called as resources. Mm -hmm. Under the resource, it is available where they can uh, access this book. Okay. So, this book explains what is the steps and what is to be considered when they have to do it. Right. So, any suggestions for the content developers, be it teachers or students or anybody who wants to add on to the content? Okay. Uh, one thing when we are developing the content, uh, there are two things. One is how do you develop? how do you publish it. Mm -hmm. So, you can see here on this uh, screen that uh, we are just listing out certain licenses on the screen. So, you can see that whenever we are actually finished, once you are finished preparing your e-content, mm -hmm. when you want to give it to anybody, if you do not add any license to it, mm -hmm. it is considered to be a copyrighted material. Mm -hmm. If you do not give any license, if it is just blank, then it is considered to be copyrighted. So, okay. others cannot take and reuse it. If they want to modify something, mm -hmm. they will not be able to use it. So, whenever we create e-content and when we wanted it to be used by multiple people, it is good that we give license to it. Mm -hmm. So, the creative common license is something which we can add to it. Mm -hmm. There are several creative commons license. We have already discussed this separately in one of our live shows. Mm -hmm. So, we have to give a appropriate license to our material. So, okay. if you feel somebody can modify yours, mm -hmm. there is a separate license. Okay. So, it is nothing that you need to apply somewhere and get a license. It is mm -hmm. only simply you have to write uh, this material is released under CC by SA or mm -hmm. CC by dot zero. Mm -hmm. So, it is only a word liner which you are adding, but it makes a lot of difference in the use case. Mm -hmm. This is one thing we can consider. The mm -hmm. second thing when we are going to consider is uh, the tools which you use to develop e-content. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use lot of uh, preparatory tools which we purchase. Mm -hmm. So, whenever we develop it, you can see the watermark of the software true, which true, is true. appearing in all your right, content. Right. Mm -hmm. So, we are uh, indirectly becoming the brand ambassadors for individual people. Mm -hmm. So, rather there is lot of free and open source software that is available. We can try out developing resources with those tools that can be uh, given it for free, okay, which also can be editable. Can you give example of any tool? Like for example, when you wanted to prepare an audio resource, you can use tools like Audacity mm -hmm. that helps you to develop uh, mm -hmm. this. Like for example, I want to create a small piece of animation. Mm -hmm. So, I can use several tools like mm -hmm. if you want to have a 2D animation, you can use a tool called Tupi. Okay. You can, if you want to make it as a 3D animation, you can use other uh, software called Scratch. Mm -hmm. So, there are several animation tools mm -hmm. available. For each type of e-content, there are tools available which yeah. can be used by us which are free and open. And the last point which I would like to insist is let us keep the quality parameters in our mind. That is what I wanted to ask yeah. as well. Yes, you are telling. Uh, there are some uh, main quality parameters which we need to take care when we are creating. So, mm -hmm. it is not just the validation part at the end. Mm -hmm. But as we said, I am just re insist reiterating these points. Mm -hmm. So, when we are doing at all the phases, even when you are analyzing mm -hmm. or designing or mm -hmm. developing or implementing, basically right. piloting or using check on every, every, every stage, let us keep mm -hmm. a check on the quality parameters. Mm -hmm. We can see here the basic six quality parameters, okay. which has been elaborated in the guideline booklet also. Mm -hmm. The one thing is our target audience for whom we are preparing. Mm -hmm. It should be suitable to their age, suitable to their learning style, suitable to their way of understanding. Mm -hmm. So, there are several parameters linked with target audience. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes it also takes care of the development. If the child children has some special need, then the mm -hmm. content has to address that. Mm -hmm. So, when you say target audience, we have psychological parameters, mm -hmm. physical parameters, cognitive parameters. The second main parameter is all about the content itself. Mm -hmm. The third is the pedagogical consideration. How you want that resource to be used? It, mm -hmm. it is also an important parameter mm -hmm. which has to be uh, taken care mm -hmm. and technical way of presenting the content 
and the technical features basically we uh, talk about technical features is adaptability to different devices mm -hmm. and also the administrative con considerations in terms of the cost mm -hmm. the effort you are going to put the human resource you are going to implement right. so these are basic parameters if somebody would like to really go uh, detail into it they can refer to the guideline booklet which is available on the portal okay thank you so much dr angel time is up now we have to sum up very quickly so it was really nice to have discussion with you i enjoyed this discussion and uh, so our viewers did so and uh, before i leave i have a request to be made to our viewers if you have any queries any questions or complaints regarding this program you can uh, send it on ciet.kishormanch@gmail.com and also note down our uh, toll free numbers 18001121265 and 18001121199 so please uh, keep connected with kishor manch for now signing off namaskar